viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. Well, breaking from our normal routines, we're actually going to talk about politics today. Yeah, Andrew, I know that's that's um, Andrew. I'm sorry, Taylor. Uh, some you'll have to understand. I, I know somebody else who by that name, uh, Taylor. I I understand. I normally don't talk about politics here on viewpoints, but uh, today I'm going to uh, I'm going to. Uh, try something new chatting with mark roderman host of front row and mark uh <laughs> we'll start with the uh announcement over the weekend and uh the growing well i don't know disbelief uh amazement at the issue of the russian collusion connection or or w- w- russian collusion uh, <laughs> what's your observation well, I think the president's been uh, proved right that it was a hoax all along. It was a deep state uh, hit. It was a, a silent coup trying to, to get rid of him. I mean, they were actually surveilling him during the presidential race. Uh, I think there's going to be criminal referrals that are already starting to happen from David uh, Nunes. And uh, I think the best line, and I think Adam Schiff has just proved to be uh, frankly, just out of touch and, and, and carrying the same torch about collusion nope. and nope. obstruction. And I think one of the best lines I heard was from Lindsey Graham that he has, to the Mueller report, Schiff has an Oliver Stone approach. Uh, and I think that's right, because I just don't think it's believable to, to the American people this time. And I will say to you that uh, everybody said, and there was some senators even in, in North Carolina, United States senators who wanted to do, have legislation to protect Mueller, it wasn't needed. Trump never interfered. He never fired him. And uh, But I don't think that, that Trump's people, nor should they, uh, the Republicans, let this rest, because what they did to Trump, I think, was – uh, was very bad, and we have never seen the likes of this, in, in, at least in my lifetime. You know, it, uh, Tom Shalou, who uh, does an afternoon program uh, preceding this program here on the talk station, made an interesting observation about Adam Schiff uh, at some po- at one point during the uh, afternoon program, and he pointed out that Adam Schiff kept saying that he had the goods on uh, the president. He had, un- you know. Uh, more than circumstantial evidence of collusion and obstruction, but definitely collusion first. And now, of course, the report comes out from uh, the special prosecutor, Robert Mueller, that uh, there was no collusion. And when challenged <clears throat> about his remarks related to the president and his air quotes here, <clears throat> evidence, um, dead silence. I, the, the point is that we now well, have... Two years right. to bring this evidence forward. He has it. Now right. he's still saying he has it, but they have to have the report. And I noticed, I'll tell you, that what you're seeing now is a lot of the Democrats who are in favor of Mueller are now trashing him. I know. But but I, don't, I think what's happening, and I think your listeners are probably like myself, I think there's ex- investigation exhaustion. Right. I think people are tired of it. They want to move on. I don't know if you saw this. But the Chinese came to the table today on the trade deal with more concessions and their stated reason because Trump's been cleared on the, the on on the Russian investigation and they were waiting to see if he got hurt by it. Now now that's that is an important issue because what's really been at play here is more than just a um inter uh, pardon me internecine warfare between Democrats and Republicans brother against brother or or sister against sister whatever uh what's really been at play then is international relations with as you just point out China ne- next probably North Korea and then the other issue <clears throat> in light of the fact that there was all this collusion going on what impact this might have with our Russian uh, diplomacy as well. So that's, that's very correct. interesting. But with China, where we have these negotiations, they backed off on on the uh, uh, on, on some of the key decisions that needed to be made, and they haven't all been made. But some of the they've given concessions, and we're talking about intellectual property, which are still uh, I think right. they're still in negotiations on. But they thought the president was weak, so they were willing to wait it out. Now, and- now they're, they're, they're they have stated that they're back at the table. Because as far as they're concerned, uh, the investigation's over. Okay. Um, the the uh, other question, of course, related to this is um, the um, – uh, pardon me, I'm getting a note here. They wanted to work on my volume. Um, the other uh, 
the other issue associated with this is, of course, the whole issue of, you know, making some national plans, actually doing things. We've got budget issues. We've got uh, circumstances associated with, um, you know, the the the. the uh, one hundred thousand people, la- legal immigrants, right. crossed last uh, month right. I- into America. It's estimated at one point two million illegal immigrants. We have a crisis at the border. We have a debt crisis. Uh, we have uh, Social Security and, 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 and Medicare mm-hmm. and entitlements uh-huh. uh, need to be reformed. Numerous things need to be done. Uh, they're working on a budget, and you still have. Uh, uh, the, the, the folks on the other side, the Democrats resisting, which I don't think is going to serve them well. I think they're trying to pivot off now and go to health care, Pelosi and the others, uh, because they realize, particularly Steny Hoyer, who's the majority leader, the Democrat from Maryland, who's pretty savvy, is they understand that the left wing of their party, the progressives, the socialists like Ocasio-Cortez, is not going to win middle America. All right, we're going to get back to this on the issue of um, national health care in just a moment. The the real issue, uh, before I get to the, go to the break with you, Mark, and Mark Roderman, of course, host of Front Row, as seen on WUNC-TV every Friday evening, so you can watch him as well as listen to him tomorrow evening, 8.30 on the main channel, 9 o'clock on the digital channel. The other issue, Mark, and this is one that I, I'm uh, – I. I'm very interested in because I had the privilege and honor of talking with Lara Trump earlier today. The fact that he has an administration that has been uh, challenged at every step of the way. As a matter of fact, I asked her uh, about how, uh, you know, how he weathers the storm and what, which, as you've pointed out, he does every day. But the kicker here is his administration, his staff, the, even his family. Uh, they they can't go out without being charged, challenged, or, or harassed. Uh, harassed, yeah, right. So, I, how, you know, this is business has to get on, and we've had several calls. Well, it's, it's got to end. And, and I'll tell you, anybody who harasses somebody in a restaurant, a public place, uh-huh. ought to be arrested. Pure and simple. They're, you know, uh, they they can come down on on these kids and the supporters of President. Uh, Trump, who were to make America in a great uh, hats, I don't see them doing this. I think it's one-sided. It's got to end, and it can escalate. Okay, okay. And, and we we saw that. Right, I want I want to hear how how this is going to influence the upcoming elections. We can pick on the just for the fun of it the upcoming April election for the 3rd Congressional District. We've got a ninth Congressional District soon. Shortly thereafter, we have two Congressional Districts in play here in North Carolina, but the 2020 elections, both at a national <clears throat> and a local level. We're going to get more uh, from our guests here in just a moment. Mark Roderman, again, host of Front Row, as seen on WNC-TV's main channel, 8.30 tomorrow evening, 9 o'clock on the digital channel, Saturday at 4 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 a.m., both those times on the digital channel, and then again noon on Sunday on WNC-TV's main channel, and that's Mark Roderman, host of Front Row. Viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. We have, uh, pardon me, we have Mark Roderman with us. I'm making some adjustments, pardon me, here on my uh, monitor. We have Mark Roderman with us uh, and we'd like to have him every Thursday afternoon. Give us an opportunity to find out what's on tap for Front Row tomorrow evening. We'll find that out here in just a moment. And as always, to remind you, Front Row is seen on WUNC-TV's main channel, 8.30 on Friday evening, at, and then 9 o'clock on the digital channel, and then Saturday and Sunday. I'll share those times with you a little later on in the program. But, uh, Mark, looking at the past uh, week's events and uh, the continuing saga of the Democrats calling for yet more uh, investigation of the president. My question is, what does this do to, uh, you know, the candidates that are now lining up for a variety of offices? By the way, I know that the uh, lieutenant governor is lining up now for, to run as governor. He has to because uh, he, he is termed as a uh, lieutenant governor. He can't run again. Uh, we What happens now for the candidates? What what to... Uh, well, well here, here, here's a couple of things. One is... I think it was a very uh, smart move by uh, Leader McConnell, a majority leader McConnell in the Senate. And that was to force the Democrats to vote on the Green New Deal. Uh 
Now, the profiles encouraged every one of them, the Democrats in the Senate voted present, although almost everyone to a man and woman endorsed the Green New Deal. So how far vested are they really? Mm. But the Democratic candidates for president, like Kamala Harris, like Cory Booker, like Elizabeth Warren, didn't want to be on record because they knew it would be used against them. But what I expect is is that you're not going to get much done uh, until uh, after 2020. And, and let's, and from a conservative point of view, I would hope that uh, the Republicans retake the House and hold the Senate. Um, I think the president was ill-served by Paul Ryan. They could have frankly gotten uh, the money almost 25 billion for the for the barrier for the fence for the wall uh but that wasn't done he's now trying to scramble to keep us safe uh, but but i think that pelosi is, is really running and the only way i can describe it is, is, is kind of an ad hoc house because she cannot control people uh like uh Congresswoman Omar, she cannot control people like Ocasio Cortez and other, <coughs> excuse me, new um, new members that are are to the very left, the center, and socialist in her party, and so nothing will get done of any consequence. I would suggest to you that they'll probably just have a continuing resolution and no. Um, you know, they'll wait to the last minute. The government will almost get shut down. Then they'll pass a 60 or 30 day or 100 or six six months continuing resolution because they're just dysfunctional and that's a shame for america but that's where we are we, okay this goes to the issue of course of getting something done we have we you brought up the issue of national health care and of course the president has and this is another issue by the way uh, the wall is being built <clears throat> um I, I vaguely recall that was maybe a campaign promise, correct me if I'm wrong, um, <clears throat> the elimination of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare as it's known, and uh, according to a court case yesterday, looks like that may be going out the window. Uh, obviously, the Republicans are now, uh, if you will, uh, in in both chambers, are scrambling because uh, the president has said the Republicans need to come up with, a, with an alternative. Um, help me out, Mark. Well, I what think have they been the doing? Offense is, uh, well, yeah, but what have they been doing? Well, why, why, why is... I, 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 the best defense is, is a good, good offense. offense. Okay, right. now, yeah. uh, last cycle, the Congressional Committee ran, frankly, against the president. They didn't promote any of his issues. They didn't run on any of his issues because they're pretty much controlled by the D.C. consulting class, which they only respond to D.C. consulting class, only responds Right. To the major donors. But I think the president's right to do this because I think what he's trying to force them to do is do something, do something. And I, this... he realizes that they got their clock cleaned in the House by doing nothing. And and by the way, Democrats spread the big lie that Republicans uh, are against pre-existing conditions, which is not true. However, in a vacuum, you lose because you don't have anything to offer. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me, what have we been talking about this since 2010, 2009? Right. And Republicans don't have a plan yet? And that's my, it's absurd. I, that, that's my question. I, it, this goes back to, I'm wondering if, if, quite frankly, the president isn't pulling back the covers and uh, or back, actually pulling back the curtain and all the smoke and mirrors of the great Oz is just a guy spinning a, a wheel and uh, talking into a large microphone. Th this is a Republican and Democrat. I, it's a little frustrating. And I, where is the uh, imagination? You know, one of the great comments very quickly, uh, the argument about the Bush administration, um, uh, W's administration on the issue of 9-11 was lack of imagination. All right. They didn't think about the fact that they folks would use airplanes as a, a weapon, which they did. OK, we learned from that. Well, the very people that have complained about the absence of imagination in uh, the executive branch 
haven't shown any imagination in the uh, legislative branch. Well, no, and, and they're just interested in putting out releases right. and saying that they're working in a bipartisan way, but nothing gets done. Um, I, and, I, and, I, and I will tell you uh, candidly that, uh, and I often think about this, I think Trump is on a roll right now. Uh-huh. I think he's trying to do all he can do for America. And I hate to say this, but we may have peaked under Ronald Reagan uh, because wow. <laughs> people work together then. Even Tip O'Neill worked with the president he did. on his agenda. And, 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 and then when you saw when Clinton was in, uh, Newt worked with him to get a balanced budget. Right. And they got welfare reform. Nobody is getting anything done Yet they're getting paid $174,000 a year. And Steny Hoyer wants to, quote, modernize the house mm-hmm. and bump their salary to about two hundred k a year. <laughs> all right. Uh, I mean, can you believe it? I mean, you know, and by the way, that's all, if they get $200,000 a year, that's four times what the average uh, family makes in America. Let's talk here very quickly before we go to the break. Uh, and this is a... a a big issue, and I, one that I think is, um, it, you know, everybody is wondering. The 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 prosecution, the pardon me, special prosecutors' issues are finished. The the Democrats are they going to? This is a twofer. Are the Democrats going to maintain the the um, the canard, the false argument of collusion, obstruction, or are they going to do something worthwhile? And the next question associated with this. Will the Republicans, the never Trumpers, uh, leave their pedestal and finally accept the fact that one, this president has accomplished things? That yes, he is um, eccentric. He is not of the standard political class. Will the Republicans, particularly the never Trumpers, finally decide they need to get behind the president? First question: What are the Democrats going to do? Are they going to? No, I think they're going to continue to investigate and harass this president. Uh, right. I think Elijah Cummings on the Judiciary Committee, the Judiciary Committee Chairman, will continue to harass the president. I think Adam Schiff will, on the Intelligence Committee, will continue to harass the president. Now you have Elijah Cummings wanting to know everything the president did business-wise prior to becoming president. And if I were the president and Newt said it today, (laughs) he needs to just ignore Ignore Adam. They need to ignore Adam Schiff and Elijah Cummings. <clears throat> and not show up and don't give him one piece of paper. It's, it is it is really an harassment of a sitting president. And why in the world is it Congress's business about anything that the president did as a prior citizen, as a to being citizen. the president of the United States in his business that he's had for a year? And one quick note about Jerry Nadler, who's also uh, going mm-hmm. to be uh, coming after the, the, the president. Jerry Nadler was a city councilman in New York City, and he and President he, he harassed President Trump for 20 years on every one of the developments he did in New York and New Jersey. Okay, what about the Never Trumpers? Then we'll go to the break. Well, I, I got to think they're they're becoming a smaller group. They're not very influential. I think, you know, Bill Crystal was very concerned that there was collusion, and he knew that there had been, and he could see it, but he couldn't really tell us. And by the way, he's proven wrong again. Right. So you have these people like Rachel Maddow, who, by the way, who's, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, who, who, whose uh, ratings have dropped 20 percent uh, since um, the Mueller report. Look, Barr's under no obligation to get this thing out fast. He'll get it out on his own good time in the next two weeks. They won't show sources or methods. They won't put people in there who were not convicted of anything, who were interviewed for fear they'll get smeared. And uh, one thing I would say about the Mueller report, which Andy Andy McCarthy and National Review, a lot of other people think, I think it was kind of a chicken's way out not to make a decision on obstruction by Mueller. I mean, he had $25 million, all these people he interviewed, all this grand jury testimony. He couldn't come to a conclusion. Isn't that a prosecutor's job? Right. Okay. 
Uh, by the way, just want to make mention of this. I was listening again to Tom Shalou earlier today, a, a great program following Todd Starnes here on the talk station. And he was talking to an individual who was uh, in uh, Grand Rapids, I think it was. Um, and uh, the fact that uh, because they've got a big uh, event happening uh, tonight, a rally. And as of two o'clock this afternoon, over 6,000 people were already in the uh, stadium awaiting. They were the- there. This morning, morning, I know, lining up at eight o'clock. I know, you think I know. That the president, when you love him or hate him politically, and you agree or disagree with everything he does, <laughs> we, that is a base that I have never seen. We, we're gonna, a loyal base. We're going to get back to that in a moment, and in relationship to state races, I teased that earlier. I want to say with that here in a moment with Mark Roderman, host of Front Row here on Viewpoint. Again, Front Row tomorrow evening, 8.30 on WNC TV's main channel, 9 o'clock on the digital channel, 4.30 Saturday afternoon, 9.30 Sunday morning, all on the digital channel, WNC TV's digital channel, then noon on Sunday on the main channel. That's Mark Roderman, great panel of uh, guests and topics. We'll hear about that in just a moment here on Viewpoints. All right, we've got uh, Mark Roderman with us. Mark, one thing I failed to bring up, and it was an interesting um, comment made by um, uh, Vice former Vice President Joe Biden about the fact that um, he was upset with himself, uh, the fact that Washington is a, uh, you know, a, a white old men's club. He did acknowledge that. Um, I, he's been on an apology tour. Is this in pre- pre- preparation for his announcement? What's going on with... Uh... Well, you know, I mean, he is on an apology tour. There's no question. He apologizes uh, for the, the Anita Hill, the way he treated Anita Hill uh, in the Clarence Thomas hearings, which was an aber... I mean, to me, abhorrent the way that Clarence Thomas was treated in his uh, mm-hmm. confirmation hearings for Supreme Court. Uh, I think that he's hurting himself, and I'll tell you why. Uh, he, he he has known a lot of blue collar people like him, mm-hmm. all right. But going on an apology tour, uh, I, and then apologize for quote being white. How about let's just all say we're going to try to get the best and brightest, what, what, whatever what? color. But for him to apologize like that, I think it actually hurts him with the blue collar. I would suspect. All right, I, I want to talk about one other item before we get to the uh, upcoming program on uh, Front Row tomorrow evening on WNC TV's main channel, uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock on the digital. Uh, let's talk about the impact of the Mueller report and the continuing um, efforts on the part of the Democrat leadership to consistently you know, pick at this story. What does it do for the local candidates? Do they need well, to turn their Well, I think they're backs? running their own individual races. Now, as you know, in in North Carolina 9, that, I think that's kind of a jump ball, but I hear a lot of good things about it. I think this gentleman's name is Rushing, Dan Bishop. Bishop? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. He's got a shot. The, mo- the ones I've been impressed with, and I haven't really followed it in the third, is I think uh, uh, the former Marine Phil Law has a leg up. Uh, Name because recognition. He, he became in second last time to 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 almost an icon, right? Walter Jones, whose family had been there in that seat for over fifty years, uh, or quite close to it. And I think he did. I think he's got an excellent grassroots uh, record. The other one I think who has a, 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 a grassroots uh, potential is is well wired within the Republican, Republican. Party, and I think has a, a good ad out is, is Michelle Nix. So I think that the, the key there is to try to get in the runoff. And it would not surprise me if you had Michelle Nix and Phil Law in the runoff. Wow. OK. But I want to go back to the other aspect of this. Does this force the candidates to, you know, focus to turn their backs on Washington and look for what can they do for their constituents? Because, I, I mean, it's. Washington has become dysfunctional, and I'm wondering if if the local candidates, the uh, and by the way, got a, you know senatorial candidates. We know that we now have a, uh, an announced a can, uh, opponent, Republican opponent for Tom Tillis's seat. Uh, is is a this primary challenge? Primary challenge. Yeah. Uh, my question is um, is is this forcing the candidates to uh, refocus on their on their constituents, not on Washington D.C.? Well, every every race is local, and, right. and let me just say, I think some of the national issues play in. I heard of several of the ads uh, when I was on hold about immigration. I think that's on people's mind how you're going to handle that. I okay. think the debt the debt crisis is in the back of people's mind. I think they're thinking about that, but I also think, particularly in the third district, they're looking about who will support President Trump. 
And <laughs> right. and frankly, uh, uh, I think that's going to be key as well. But but the nine yards of it is is how do you relate to your constituents? Right. Because people who are running on a Washington centric, or even you know, I've done a lot of things in Raleigh. I'm not sure that works. Okay. Now, as we wrap it up with you, and of course the program is front row, is to, seen tomorrow evening on WNC TV's main channel, uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock on the digital channel. What's on tap for tomorrow evening? Well, we're going to be talking about uh, Camilla Harris's teacher pay plan. Uh-huh. And there's been a lot going on in the General Assembly, Assembly, which we'll discuss. The House passed a Paycheck Fairness Act, and we'll be talking about the latest Civitas poll. Uh, which I'll just give you a tease, uh, has uh, uh, Governor Cooper at 58% approval rating and Senator Tillis at a 26% Ooh. job approval rating. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, Mitch Koka of the John Locke Foundation will be on. Uh, we'll have Jonah Kaplan, who's with WP, uh, with w, uh, ABC News mm-hmm. 11. We'll have Donna King with WPTF Radio. And uh, that's about it, I think. All right. And uh, I want to thank you, Mark Rodman, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, stay tuned for more here. We're going to talk to the millennials, see what impact uh, the past week's uh, news has had in their opinion of politics and what what is or is not going on in Washington, D.C. That's just around the corner here on Viewpoints, the Y Factor. And always our thanks to Mark Rodman, host of Front Row, as seen on WUNC-TV every Friday evening.